Hi, welcome to ANN Working Principle. Here, ANN is having three types of layers. So, first one is the input layer. Here, we are passing the input into the neural network. Then, we are having the hidden layers. The hidden layers are performing the calculations and feature extractions, which is learning the patterns of patterns of given input. Then, there is the output layers, which is but predicting the output from the learned patterns by the hidden layer. Classification of neural network is having two types. One is the shallow neural network. The shallow neural network here will have only one hidden layer. Only one hidden layer that is called shallow neural network. And deep neural network uh, is called when the network is having more than one hidden layer then that is called deep neural network so which is useful to process the image and video data set the neural network is built by using these five steps five steps weight initialization forward propagation loss or error computation back propagation and update the weights to optimize our model here weights can be initialized randomly in three different approaches so here the weight can be initialized by using the zero that is called symmetric problem so here the uh, equation objective function is here z equal to the x uh, theta 0 x 0 plus theta 1 x 1 plus etc theta n x n so here the weight, uh, weights are indicated by using the theta when you are initializing the value to zero all the patterns all the patterns will become zero so the weights of the neural network if it is zero it will become linear model so all the partial derivatives in the back propagation will be same so when you are giving the zero weights will not at all updated during the back propagation so we should avoid to initialize all weights to be zero any one of the weight or few weights may be zero but all the weights of the neural network should not be zero and second thing we can initialize the weights with two small values like 0 0.001 0 0.0002 like this when you are applying the very small values the model will converge very earlier so it indicates the performance of model will improve very slowly during the training phase and it stops very early due to earlier convergence if the weights of the neuron are too small relative to its inputs for example here input may be a uh, 15 but our uh, our given weight is 0 0.0002 so it will make uh, it will impact the calculation relative to the inputs so what will be happen it will diminish the back propagation exponentially that means it will you see the multiplication of 15 and 0 0.0002 it will give 0 0.003 so it will uh, reduce the uh, reduce the value exponentially during the during the back propagation when you are applying the partial derivation in the with respect to loss of theta 0 it will give you a very very uh, small value that is called um, a vanishing vanishing problem so to avoid the vanishing gradient problem we can go with leaky relu or relu activation function instead of sigmoid or um, any other uh, tan h activation function yeah, when you are initializing the uh, uh, weights with two large values, suppose my la val val value of the um, theta 0 is 350 or uh, th uh, 35,000 like that. Okay, so when you are using like this, so what will be happen? The last value will oscillate around minima, local minima, but unable to converge. So when you are having the loss so here loss will be in the y axis so here you may have the number of iterations so it will go like this so first error will be here so for error may be a 10 then error error may be 
uh, here 20. So next iteration error may be a 20. So it will go here. Then suddenly error will reduce into 5. So suddenly it may come here. Again it may increase into the 10. So again it will go here. So it will not converge it will not converge right quickly so that is the problem when you are using the theta values are very large so to avoid this again we can use the leaky relu or relu so this problem is called exploding gradient problem so here in the uh, training process we are having two steps one is forward propagation and another one is backward propagation in forward propagation we will perform the uh, uh, calculation based upon received input through the input layer then the input data is fed into the uh, neurons which are forming by uh, forming by the input layer which is having n number of uh, in, uh, n number of uh, inputs so here the image is if the image is an input that means our input is for example image 5 by 5 5 pixels rows 5 pixels columns then it will be converted into the 25 uh, numerical values so 5 into 5 25 pixel values that 25 pixel values are converted into numerical values with each it denotes the intensity of the pixels the neurons in the hidden layers apply few mathematical operations based on activation function to learn the patterns to learn the patterns from the given intensity values uh, of given input image to perform this mathematical operations there are certain parameter values available that are randomly initialized that's what theta values which are randomly initialized it should not be a zero or it should not be a very too small value or it should not be a very large value so we should we should uh, uh, take care of initializing the parameter values then pass this mathematical operation to the hidden layer from input layer so here the each uh, input each uh, neuron is having uh, two two operations one is summation summation function and another one is activation function another one is activation function so summation function here we are assuming only one input and one neuron so this entire thing this entire thing is one neuron here the neuron is having two functions one is summation function and another one is activation function so in the summation function since we are having only single input for for example we are taking only single input in the input layer this is the input layer so in the input layer we are ha having single input so uh, we are taking only one parameter w1 w1 or theta1 anyone we can take any notation we can use so here the x is the input then b is the bias so for each neuron we will have one bias value for each neuron we will have one bias value then here this g is performing the calculation of w1 x1 then plus b1 so this is the calculation done by g0 so this portion of the neuron so half of the neuron this half of the neuron is performing this operation then this this portion is having the activation function here that activation function is here we are using sigmoid function sigmoid function is here 1 over 1 plus e power minus z so z value is already available here then based on this we are getting the output here that is this neuron is activated by the sigmoid value so this is assigned to this variable a that is the th uh, that is the value of a then this output is sent to output neuron so this is output neuron again output neuron is having two operations one is summation g function and another one is activation function so here the g function is here we are using again one more weight for this 
actually this will be indicated like this input layer then uh, hidden layer then output layer so input is given to here here one weight will be there then then uh, hidden layer calculated the output based upon the x1 and w1 here we will have the bias then uh, this output of the neuron one output of the neuron one will send to the neuron output neuron this is output neuron output neuron so here we will need another one uh, weight so which is performing the calculation then here we will have the bias 2 for the output neuron so this output will be uh, multiplied with the w2 so that's what you look at that output of the neuron 1 uh, multiplied with the weight 2 and added with bias 2 added with bias 2 so bias 2 is here then this is assigned with g2 right now the g2 is activated by using the activation function sigma sigmoid then again we will get the output so here we are getting the output so from the output neuron we will get the output that is called predicted output predicted output so this predicted output is stored in the variable a as uh, and sometimes it is denoted by y cap denoted by y cap then now we are having the predicted output and the actual output so calculate the error which what is the difference between the actual output which is given in the data set and the predicted output which is performed in this forward propagation so now once it is generated you can apply the error function that is the cost function mean squared error or least to squared error function any error function you can apply based upon your problem statement so here we are getting the uh, minimum uh, mean squared error function so 1 by 2 actual output minus predicted output whole square so for example if my actual output is 0 0.03 and my predicted output is 0 0.08 then uh, uh, the difference between these both and squared it up so finally we are getting the error is 0 0.356 then once loss is identified we can up we can go for uh, backward propagation we will apply the backward propagation in the next video. Thanks for watching.